Blog Talk Radio. Hello, all you hipsters and hippies and and deadheads and just far out groovy people out there. Uh, this is the Girl George and the Dragons radio show. I'm Girl George, and today we have the most fantastic person in the world. We have Zane Kesey is going to talk to us about the buzz. So, hello, Zane. How are you doing? Yes, how are you doing today? Oh, well, I'm probably not the most fantastic person in the world, but I'm doing okay. Oh, you are to me. You are to me. So, so, uh, so, what are you doing with the bus? Are you trying to uh, get the old bus back running again? Yeah, we're raising funds right now to... Uh, get the original 1939 International Harvester that uh, that Dad and all the pranksters drove across the country back in 1964. We're trying to have it restored, Um, and we're raising money for it uh, at furtherdowntheroad.org. So you have a new bus too that you you just finished painting that you're you're taking around to events now. Yeah, the old bus died oh just about at the end of the '60s, and Dad got another bus oh in the '80s, and yeah, we've been driving that around. It's a 1947 International Harvester, a shorter version, which is nice and convenient. Uh, and yeah, I, I it's sort of my job to take care of it and uh, preserve it and make sure it's working good and to take it out for people to see. So, are you going to the big uh, hemp festival in in Colorado in April? Not that I know of. But I didn't oh, even you know should! It's a great, great, great big event going. It, it's it's on four. 20. Actually, it's that weekend of 420. So so that'll be big in Colorado in April. i just seen about it in High Times magazine. <laughs> I you should go, go to, to the, the big one in Seattle. Uh, oh, yeah. It's yeah. towards the end of summer, I believe. Uh-huh. Um, the one thing I worry about with a, you know, with a ancient antique gold bus, uh, is trying to climb it up a mountain that size. Oh, yeah, that would be kind of hard, wouldn't it? So how many buses have there been? Only two? Yeah, just the two. Uh, yeah, they're, they're both at the farm um, in the bus barn. And uh, they're both named further, and they're both spelled both ways. It's one of those <laughs> things where people are really confused and even willing to argue with me about uh, how it's spelled. Um, so how is it, it spelled? It's spelled both ways. <laughs> it's spelled both ways, um, and what it came, where the confusion came from, was it started off with ER on the first bus trip, and they're filming it, and somewhere around Yellowstone they changed it to UR, and then it went back to ER and uh, back to UR, and Tom Wolf, who wrote electric Kool-Aid acid test, he he was never on the bus. He was around for a couple of weeks when nothing was happening, you know, after the 60s were just about over. Uh, That's well, what usually is. <laughs> the prankster part of the 60s. And uh, he called it UR. And so people just assumed that he was on the bus and knew what he was talking about, and uh, and they considered that the Bible. Yeah, but, they, uh, they, they consider him the ultimate... Uh, yeah. Authority on the thing, and he wasn't even there. I mean, he's never even taken acid, <laughs> but he does a hell of a job of describing acid to people that have never taken it, and that's yeah, because he yeah. did gr- he did great interviews with all of the pranksters, and really got detailed notes of what it was like. So when that original bus happened, when that original ride happened. Oh, I was three or four, um, and it was so. Did you for go me. on it? Would you, did a you go on bit. it with Kim? 
Uh, yeah, you didn't go from, to that New York trip, that one trip, did you? No, no, that was that's adults. <laughs> that was but, pretty happy. <laughs> uh, but I was sent to uh, stay with my grandma up in Springfield, and uh-huh. when the bus came through Oregon back down to California, um, we hopped on then, and I remember it. I remember painting the bus, which you know. <laughs> Made total sense to me. It's, it was loads of fun. Just, you know, splash paint on this bus. Make, <laughs> what could be better? But so I do you remember grew up riding. With the bus. I do remember riding with Cassidy driving, riding up on top of the bus. And one thing you don't know until you've ridden on top of the bus is that going around a corner, they lean a lot more than you think that they do. <laughs> uh, they really lean enough so that you feel like it's going to fall over. <laughs> and we were driving down the coast road with Cassidy driving, leaning over those big cliffs into the ocean way down below, and I uh, I was scared. I would have been scared, too. Did he drive like a maniac? Well, that's all I really remember about him uh, as far as driving was uh, being scared up on top of the bus, thinking we're falling, we're rolling down this cliff for sure. You don't remember if he drove real fast? I, I keep thinking that he would be someone that would drive real fast. Well, it definitely seemed like it to me to be leaning that hard around the corner. Um, <laughs> but uh, it might have been totally different down below. And you know, what, for an what adult, was Neil like? Kid. What was Neil like? You must have spent a lot of time around him. No, uh, usually when Neil showed up, it was time for adult time, uh, <laughs> and you know. That meant that it was probably bedtime for us, and uh, we had something else to do, uh, babysitter, whatever. The, the adults are going to be busy for the next 12 hours. Yeah. What about Wavy Gravy? Were you around him much? Some. I remember... Uh, a, he seems to like kids was, a lot. He has a, 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 a circus where he trains kids now. Yeah, the Camp Winter Rainbow. Um, yeah. But Wavy was, oh, much later. Um, you know, he he was around more after the pranksters were sort of done. And uh, I do remember, though, riding around with him on the bus and uh, him having a lot of really great ideas, like like we would determine which days would be a certain person's day, and they got to make all the rules. And I remember when it was my day. Well, that's cool. They kind of do that at my my grandson's school. Where they kind of have this is their day, and they're kind of king for the day. And each one in the class gets to be the king for a day. So they probably went to Rainbow's uh, uh, college there for clowns and stuff because we're in Berkeley, <laughs> so you know Berkeley uh-huh. is that way. You bet. That's that's the the breeding grounds of uh, clowns. Yeah, I, I live in Berkeley. So uh, what does uh, being on the bus mean to you? There's always that phrase, are you on the bus? So what does that mean to you? Well, the phrase originally of you're either on the bus or off the bus had to do with, you know, the original trip and you have, what, 10, 15 people and you're trying to get from here to there and it's, it's busy and when you stop for gas you're never sure who gets off and goes to the bathroom when everybody's asleep and... Uh, that, you know, sometimes people would get left behind. And uh, <laughs> there there'd be other times when people decided that, you know, maybe they're going to stay in this town for a couple days. Uh, can the bus wait for them? And Dad would finally put his foot down and say, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus, uh, <laughs> meaning you're either you're either on this trip and with this whole movie that we're doing or, or not. Um, and... That turned into uh, sort of a have you been experienced, uh, have you ever taken acid kind of thing for deadheads of are you on the bus? And it really grew some legs there. Um, and now there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people on the bus. <laughs> yeah, it means it means so much to a lot of people that or weren't even born yet then. And to some it just means that are you hip to 
to the ways of the world and you know the the oneness right. of everything and the whole hippie you know philosophy of we're all one and we're all together yeah. in this thing. Even just so, cool? even if they never took acid, it's it's still the same. And now, even uh, coming up is the 50th anniversary of that bus trip. Wow. And, oh, it's a question of whether or not we're going to do something. I have a few people trying really hard to talk me into making this huge bus trip again. And You should do it. You should do it. You should do it. Oh, I think I should let somebody else do it with their bus. Uh, it sounds like a lot of work and breaking down bus and a lot of crazies in a vehicle uh and uh, the first bus does trip. somebody else have a bus oh i'm sure there's that, loads of people with a bus that's newer that that you could go on the bus with them oh i didn't say i was going because you should be there you should, you should no i got there. work to do I've, I've got a, well, a let's sit chronically back. sick like wife that i gotta take care right? of I've, I've got my you know day-to-day job and then during summertime i've got my day-to-day job the sick wife and going out and doing vending on the weekends, uh, which is sort of my bread and butter. And well, it, we can send was, Babs out. Babs likes to go on trips, don't he? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the original uh, trip. I guarantee that there's uh, a bunch more people that are ready to do this and, you know, get wild and have fun. But uh, my job on that trip would be... I guess the next generation do it. Let the next exactly. generation do it. Do you My have kids that, that are into that thing? Uh, I've got the one kid that's in college now, but uh, he might consider it. He's he's done a bunch of bus trips when he was a kid uh, uh-huh. with with me and Grandpa, and you know even even the bus trip to uh, the UK. Uh huh. Or the one to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which we called the the Grand Further Tour because the grandkids were on board. Uh, so is uh, is the is the bus in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, it was for a while. Um, it was well, it should an exhibit. Be still there. <laughs> well, they didn't really have room to put it inside, and so it was outside. <laughs> uh, well, they could getting, put pictures of it and movies of uh, it. Yeah, and they had an exhibit uh, that had all the dead stuff and all the... It was the whole psychedelic experience exhibit, uh, which was really nice. Um, My favorite part of that exhibit was, uh, you know, they had all kinds of things like uh, Jerry Garcia's acid test diploma and uh, (laughs) a lot of stuff from Woodstock and a whole display that was on this counter underneath glass. It sort of crumpled up in the corner. You saw some notes that somebody had written down, and it was the notes of a, a song list, and it started out with Star Spangled Banner. I was like, oh, well, there, you, there you go. There's some history. <laughs> so do you play an instrument yourself? I play the Thunder Machine. I'm pretty good at that, but uh, the Thunder Machine's kind of broken nowadays. Uh, it, it got its back broken on that trip to England on the bus. What is a thunder machine? Oh, the thunder machine is this. They had another one that they had back in the acid test days. And it's a big old huge chunk of metal that you can get inside. And there's strings and things to plunk. And then you can bong on the side of it. And it rumbled and made great noises. And then they got another one that they painted it all up. And it even had wheels that they would take around and... Uh, they'd show up at uh, dead concerts here and there, like at New Year's shows, and uh, and decide they're going up on stage during the drum solo with this thunder machine, and uh, you guys better try and figure out how to get it plugged in and how to mic it. The, the sound men hated it, but the drummers loved it. I think I've seen a picture of it. I think this went up on the, the Keithley fan site with uh, uh-huh. Babs looking through it. I think that's what that is. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, that looks so cool. Looks like he's in another dimension or something in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so so they have uh, big parties up uh, at Babs' place on 4th of July? Oh, yeah, that's uh, 
he has a website called Sky Pilot Club, and yeah. uh, oh, if you go there, and you can even join the club, and they have a uh, every Fourth of July the the pranksters and the Sky Pilot uh, people and friends get together, and usually there's you know special people who show up and play. Uh, you'd be surprised the quality of music coming out of this little uh, barbecue picnic style uh, event. That's up in Oregon? Uh-huh. So so, so he's just like Willie Nelson. Willie has a party every 4th of July, so I guess Willie can't come to your party. He's having his own. No. Uh, I think last year who was there was uh, oh, the other piano player, um, I can't believe it. Bruce Hornsby. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, is, so does uh, the dead come up there? The re- what's left of the the dead? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, oh, that's cool. We, we get them here and there. Um, and you never know who to expect. It's uh, and there's always by the end of the night one pretty amazing jam. And so you also you, on, you take your bus to different parties and different events, or sure, uh, where you take it to. Well, some of my favorite uh, is up to Horning's Hideout. That's here in Oregon, uh, a place that's oh up in the middle of the woods and uh, a camping lot that is just perfect. And String Cheese plays there each year, and it's. Uh, just completely epic. Um, it's like a burning man in in the trees. And uh, one of my other favorites, the one of the biggest parties I know of, is up at the gorge up in Washington. Whenever fish plays up there, um, uh-huh. it's so far out in the middle of nowhere that it's all camping. There's you can't get out of there and go to some hotel somewhere that's just nowhere to go to. So pretty much you're locked in there, and they just let whatever happens happen in there. Uh, it's mayhem <laughs> all night long. There's no sleep. So what was your dad, King Keithy, like? Well, he was a, a lot of different people to me. Um, you know, he was loads of fun. He was a magician. He was, oh, your drill sergeant um, and uh, your teacher and your coach. Uh, he He's not necessarily who everybody expects him to be on a daily day, day-to-day basis at the farm. Um, it's not, you know, some wild party 24-7. There's work to do and chores to do and uh, loads of it, uh, you know, getting out there, bringing in the hay, all that kind of stuff, uh, changing the irrigation. There was there was lots of work for uh, us boys to do and the girls to do. And, um, and there was also a lot of exploring out there to do. But Dad would, he was very hard-nosed and uh, expected a lot out of you when it came to chores. But then when it came to fun time, uh it was totally different he would he would turn into somebody that could show you things that you never could believe existed uh he knew Oregon like the back of his hand and uh could show you secret caves and uh special places to go visit as far as the farm goes uh it's it's lots of fun but uh uh and it's still there and Mom has married Larry McMurtry, and so the farm is right now kind of in limbo. We have somebody staying there, a caretaker, and it's all locked up, waiting to kind of figure out what we're going to do with it. So you're not staying on your father's farm? No, I'm about a mile away. Oh, okay. So did Ken keep uh, writing till the end? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, that's he, he good. Wrote, he wrote and wrote. He he would write every day, just not necessarily on a novel or a story that was meant to for everybody else to see. Um, 
let's see, his last book, I believe, was Last Go Round, uh, that he wrote with Ken Babs about the the first uh, national championship rodeo uh, in Portland, or just outside of Portland, there in Oregon, uh, a place called Pendleton. Uh, quite a place. So how many books did he write? I don't know. And, you know, then where do you divide what's a book and what's a magazine? And uh, <laughs> you start counting the kids' books and the oh, publications. Oh, he wrote kids' books, too? Uh-huh. Yeah, if you ever get cool. a chance, if you have a kid that's somewhere between, you know, one and ten. Uh, I have grandkids that are three. I mean, yeah, one's three and one's seven. Oh, perfect. You want to go to, well, maybe not EB, A, eBay, but uh, Abe, A-B-E dot com, or maybe even Amazon, and look for Little Tricker the Squirrel meets Big Double the Bear. Uh, oh, cool. It is the best reading out loud story that I know of. It's along the lines of sort of Br'er Rabbit, um, and uh, it, it's... Uh, it's one of the best things he's ever written. Uh, and another story called The Sea Lion is for older kids, especially girls. Uh-huh. Have you written anything? Do you write, too? No, I don't write. Uh, I edit video here and there. Uh, I do mail order. Uh, uh, I do art. So you're an artist. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug? You know, any websites or, or uh, oh, well, there's, anything there's that you sell, website. T-shirts or anything on that order? I sell T-shirts and posters and uh, DVDs of the bus trips and acid tests. And uh, my biggest seller lately is Blotter Art. And this is all uh-huh. at uh, Keezy.com. So where can com, people find it, that? What? It's keezy. dot com. That's spelled K E Y dash Z, like a hyphen Z. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, blotter art is my new big seller, uh, which is the the paper that people used to put uh, LSD on. You know that would rip off into little squares, and you'd have a little square, and you'd always wondered what the big picture was, and now people can buy the big picture and put it on their wall, uh, remind them uh, of the good old days. But there ain't no acid on it. <laughs> it's definitely acid-free paper. <laughs> no, we're not committing any crimes. I, I don't even do drugs anymore. I'm the, I'm, uh, in order to go on the road and really get away with selling something that's potentially this questionable, uh, you got to be pretty straight. Uh, yeah, because they they bust you every time you turned around, right? <laughs> well, they'd at least look at it really, really, really hard. Um, <laughs> and you know, when you here you have thousands of these sheets, and they look at you, and uh, uh, that I've never had it happen, but that whole thought terrifies me. Uh, I'm sure that they've looked at my mail before uh, because I send this. <laughs> I send out, you know, hundreds of thousands of these sheets every year, uh, and I'm sure that at some point they've tested it. They tested it and made sure there's nothing on it. Mm-hmm. They went and, to uh, Chong to, to jail for for the bongs that his son was filling. Yeah, and that no, was... No, teaching Chong. That was, yeah, that, that was a little bit iffy. I know somebody that was also in on that bust that... Uh, a uh, friend of mine that, oh, they now live in Maui, that uh, that was a shady deal that went down. Um, I don't know all the details about it, but I know that uh, um, one of the best bong makers I've ever known uh, is not allowed to make bongs anymore. Um, <laughs> because well, they, I heard it was his, cell, his son that was selling them on the web, not even yeah. him, and he had to go to jail for it. But yeah, that's the that's, way it goes. That's a stand-up thing to do. I was impressed. Uh, yeah. 
you know, he, well, he's, he's still going strong. Guy. He had cancer, and he ended up fighting that off, and he's, mm-hmm. he's still out there crusading. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that he has uh, survived what life had to throw at him because, you know, he's one of our heroes. And I yeah, him and Willie Nelson. My goodness, Willie must be 100 <laughs> by now. <laughs> and he's still out there on the bus playing every night. He doesn't seem to get any older. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He looks better. The older he gets, the better he looks. <laughs> uh-huh. he, he draws as big a crowd as ever. I, I went yeah, to yeah, he still him. sounds as good as ever. The only thing I really notice is that it, his songs go by a lot quicker than they used to. It's like, whoa, that song's <laughs> over already. <laughs> so what are your favorite bands? Who are your ba- favorite bands? Oh, well, uh, Grateful Dad is uh, right there. And, you know, my uh, further, which we'll see if they get back together, um, I really liked them because they were playing a lot of the uh, songs that the Grateful Dead didn't play anymore because, you know, they're old or too hard or whatever. Um, Uh I really liked further for that. And... Um, I'm hearing a lot of rumors that, uh, you know, with all this 50th anniversary stuff coming around and the bus trip is sort of the first anniversary we're going to see, and then there's going to be the acid tests and all these shows and all these people in uh, Woodstock and when people died, we're going to have for the next five years or so a huge amount of 50th anniversaries of great things that happened in the 60s. Oh, um, yeah. What month and was it that the that the bus ride was? What month? Oh, I'm thinking June, August. Uh, I can't so remember. That's the I anniversary because I know it's this year. Mhm. And I know they went where it was definitely hot. <laughs> yes. And that sort of became the the theme for the movie that they were filming was searching for a cool place. Yeah. Well, they were the coolest people there ever were in the whole world. I'd like to thank you for for calling in and being on my show. Now, everybody's got to look up Zane Keezy. He's all over the web. You can find him easy enough and find out where the bus is and where to find all the cool stuff. This is the Girl George and the Dragons radio show. I'd like to thank you all for coming. This is Girl Joy saying good night, goodbye, and uh, see you later, alligator.